Hello. Hello! Welcome to Explore Home Repeat. My name's Matt. And I'm Izzy. And today we are at Brooklyn's Museum, just off the M25, kind of in the Chertsey area. I am so looking forward to this place. Uh, so Brooklyn's kind of was an airbase, I think, at one point. Then it got changed into a very famous banked racetrack in this country. And now it's a museum with cars, planes, a lot of history. Really excited for this one. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what to expect. Hopefully it'll be an amazing day out. And I know you're really looking forward to it. I am very excited for this one. As always, we're here to find out what it's like if you should go and if it's worth the ticket price. Right, you ready to go? Let's go. We don't really know where we're going, but we're going to try going into this Barnes Wallace Stratosphere Chamber. There's a plane in there. I know the name Barnes Wallace, but I'm not quite sure why. Wow. They've got this huge chamber with all these vents, and it was for kind of testing aircraft. They could recreate different uh, stratospheric conditions, so make it really cold, make the pressure lower you could then test your aircraft within it. It's absolutely massive in here. I never knew something like this even existed, certainly not from the 50s or whatever. So it's really impressive. Even if you don't quite understand what it is, you can tell it's a big piece of engineering, it's can't you? It's 70 tonnes worth of steel, and it's the door to the great chamber. So it would slide in and then block uh, the chamber. Oh, is that the chamber up there then? And this, this door, would slide across. I thought I could see some wheels over here, so it would slide across. And that's the chamber that side. Amazing. So we're just going in across this very narrow little ridge and into what's the airlocks? Because I guess it was a sealed chamber, so it needed airlocks. They've got these very hefty vault-like doors. And it's this strange mixture of kind of heavy engineering and metal. And then you've got kind of <laughs> creaky, creaky wood floors that look like something off a boat. And then you go into through this second door and here's the testing chamber. This chamber could recreate the conditions up to 70,000 feet and minus 65 degrees Celsius. Incredible. All right, so now we're off into the aircraft factory entrance. In we go. Wow, this looks really cool in here. This looks amazing. So I think this area is all supposed to be about kind of about a factory floor tour. So you've got here a kind of locker room area where all the people working here would leave their coats and clock in and out. And then you go out into the various different areas of a plane factory. It's amazing to think that with the aircraft we have today, this was kind of the precursor to them. It is just made of what looks like wood and fabric and some wires and a tiny tiny little engine really now this wellington bomber wow so they used to build wellington bombers in this building this one's a really unique look at it because it hasn't got all of its kind of outer shell on so you can see the substructure beneath it's fascinating see the gun turrets the amount of detail the bombay doors underneath it is stunning you're watching the video about oh, how they build Wellington bombers. Yeah, it's the um, geodetic design he came up with Wallace oh. to allow the bombers or the aircraft if they do get damaged still to be able to fly. Oh, even if they get damaged. Ah, so this is what Izzy was talking about, the geodetic design in the structure. And it's something that Barnes Wallace came up with in order that if the main fuselage got damaged, this kind of honeycomb-like structure would spread the load around the damage section and still allow it to fly. It's amazing. It's now time for our afternoon trip round a Concorde. This we did have to pay extra, so this was six pounds for an adult. We'll see what it's like. I don't really know what to expect. I know there's a bit of an introductory talk. 
yeah. and maybe a video and then we get to go on the plane. So we just had a bit of a talk under the undercarriage. Now we're going to go inside. Yeah, so we're going in through a baggage door and then I think we come out via the normal door. But this is pretty kind of unique. The guy doing the tour, he's quite dry, but he's very good. Yeah. It's very knowledgeable, isn't yeah. it? That's what they're here for and that's what you're paying for. Now we've done the plain area of Brooklyn. We're now going to go back to the beginning and do all of the introductory section, plus the cars, the racing heritage exhibitions, all of that. And we can show you that now. Next is the British Grand Prix, where it all began. So an exhibition about Grand Prix at Brooklyn. This is where the Grand Prix started. And in here they've got a load of beautiful, beautiful cars. I didn't even know this was the first British Grand Prix. Like, we hosted the first British Grand Prix. No, like, absolutely. In 1926, the yeah. first one. Amazing. They really have got an impressive selection of cars from all around the world in this Grand Prix section. Beautiful Alfa Romeos. You can see them all behind me. Really, really good selection of cars here. This Racing Legends of Brooklyn starts off with bicycles and there's a whole area about rally bikes. And then it moves into motorcycles and then I think eventually cars. All of these cars, bikes, bicycles are all record breakers. So they each have a plaque next to them telling you what record they broke out at what particular time. It's fascinating. Some of these are really extreme shapes, you can tell. This one in the background behind you, you can tell that is a that is a car built to go fast, even for its time. One thing I do love about this place is it's kind of almost half a living museum, so it's really well themed. They've suits that era. It really gives you that 1920s vibe. Well, the music they've got, I think you can hear some of it in the background, really helps to sell it uh, and immerse you into that world and give you that little glimpse of what it would have been like in its heyday. So we are just going to enter the London Bus Museum and see what's going on. Getting towards the end of the day here, so Siena's getting a bit tired. We probably need to head off. But you really could spend a good, I would think, hour or so in this bus museum just exploring. It's not huge by any means. There's certainly a lot packed into a small area. And if buses are your thing, then you are going to love this because there's so much selection, so much kind of additional content and, and collections, as well as just the main buses. There's all the paraphernalia that kind of came with them. So that's our day over here at Brooklyn's. What did you think? I think it's been a great day. Um, we've been here basically nearly all day. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a good day out, considering because it is quite, you know, expensive. Yeah, the tickets are up there in terms of price, but like you say, it just sucks you in. There's so much to see and do here. And it's kind of three museums in one. You've got the plane area, you've got all the kind of automobile racing stuff, and then you've got the bus museum as well. So there's tons to see. Like I say, it is, the ticket prices are pretty pricey. You can save money if you book in advance though, but I do think it's just about worth it. There is so much history here and so much to see and do. What about that Concorde experience? Yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. I mean, she was getting a bit tired, so if you do have younger kids going on, yeah, just make sure they're not down for nap time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. We, we timed that badly. She was getting tired. She was getting a bit grumpy. She's a bit of a handful at the minute, to be honest. So yeah, just, it's probably not best with really little kids, but there's certainly been some kind of five, six year olds that absolutely yeah. love and going on all of these planes and seeing all of these cars. Generally, I think this place is definitely well worth a visit. There's a few things around here. You've got Mercedes World, which we will 
visit at another point that's just across the road from here. So there is tons to see and do here, more than a day's worth uh, to visit. With that being said, we're off home. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.